Hello again, Haskellings. Well, I'm super glad to be back because it's day four of the Advent of Code 2021. Let's play bingo. Our input file is a bunch of bingo numbers followed by a bunch of bingo cards. And I'm sure we're all familiar with the rules of bingo. So let's get cracking and import our Advent of Code module. But instead of using the usual interact function, Let's use the interact G function from our Advent of Code module. This uses the blank lines in the input to separate our list of strings into a list of list of strings. So you can see if we just look at the first element, we get back our bingo numbers. Let's call that nums and split that up on commas. But because it's just a single item list, we need to use head first. Next up, we can map a call to read on those strings, but we need to specify the type of the read function here to ensure it's returning us a list of ints. To read in the boards, we should use a map of map of words to get the numbers into lists of lists but there'll still be strings, so we should call read again to read in those strings as ints. But of course we need to map read across each of those words. So we end up with a list of list of list of ints, and the deepest of those lists represents a row on our bingo boards. So what we can do is duplicate those boards and then transpose the duplicates so that when we match rows on the duplicates, it's equivalent to matching columns on the originals. This means that we can have a simpler function to determine if a board has won. So let's actually implement the isWinner function now. We're going to take in a list of bingo numbers and a board, and we need to determine if any of the rows match. A row is a match if all of its members have been called out. Using E to reduction allows us to remove the B on both sides. We now need a way to determine the first winning board, so we need to accumulate the bingo numbers progressively and check each time if there is a winner. We can use the INITS function to do this. To determine the winning board, We'll map over each of those inits and filter out any boards that have not won with those numbers. We need to keep a record of the numbers called for the final calculation, so let's make this into a tuple. Let's have a look at that result. In fact, let's just get the head of that list, which should give us back the numbers called out so far and the first winning board. And it's complaining here because I forgot to pass in the list of boards to test. And now, of course, we need to filter until we have a set of numbers with a winner, which is when the second part of the tuple is not an empty list. Now that we have the winning board and numbers called out so far, we just need to do the required calculation, which is the product of the last number called and the sum of all board numbers not in the list of numbers called. And of course I've made a typo because not lm should be in the singular. Moving on to the second part, and we now need to find out which board wins last, which unfortunately means we'll have to rewrite quite a lot because of the shortcut we used for the columns. To continue to make it easier to test, let's then represent a board by a tuple of itself and its transpose. Now let's make our score calculation into a function that takes in a board of this type. Once we've done that, we can determine the last winning board by using recursion over the inits, with the base case then being when there is just one board left. In this case, we'll have to keep recurring until it wins, then calculate its score. If there are multiple boards left, we filter out the boards that have won this turn and try again.
All that remains to be done now is to update the isWinner function to test the new board type. We can do this by simply concatenating the two parts together. Until tomorrow, happy Haskelling!